Thank you very much for allowing us to interview us. No problem. Right. Can I ask you how did you how did you what was your first interest in music? The first interest in music was singing. I've been singing since a little child. And where was that? Was that like a church, at school? Church, school, anywhere. Anywhere I was, I'd just be singing. So you've been like in most of the productions at school and stuff? Yeah, I was involved in some of those things as well, yeah. Okay. How did it extend from there? Well, um, suppose uh, my cousin's a bass player, and every time I used to go there, I used to see the guitar. So yeah. I had a interest with it, you know. So he showed me the how basics. to how to play bass. Yeah, basic, yeah. the basics of it, and just continued really from there. Every time I heard a track, I tried to play. It. Yeah. Then when I got to secondary school. Um, I was introduced to a band that was there, so I started playing music continuously okay. with the reggae, so my interest just kept on going. Okay, so so you started off at singing. What was your what was your first performance? Oh, before, first performance was like um, from from primary school. Um, Joseph in the Technicolor wow. by Dream Cop. You know? And you was the main. Yeah. Okay. And then when you moved moved on from school, how was the way this performed? All over the the like youth there was a lot of like youth youth um, centres. Okay. And and that so um being within the school we go to diff different places okay. and perform just across across the country. Across the country? Yeah, sometimes we ended up in places like Kent. It seemed far when you're young, <laughs> Kent, Kent is far. It could have been up the road in Bromley, but it's it was true. Kent. I was told Kent. It's so. not five minutes. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Right. Yeah. That's okay. So. so, you moved on You moved to, on through school. When, when was your first. Was G Vibes your name all the, all the way through? No, it was. um. When I got the name Vibes, it was actually from. General vibes when um, I started singing on Dread Diamonds. It was General Glenn's here originally on Remus. Okay. And then when I moved, started to sing with um, Dread Diamonds in the mid 80s, okay. um, they gave me the name General Vibes. Okay. And then as um, time went on, <coughs> some people never used to always call me General Vibes, some people just called me Vibes. Yeah. Then a um, um, uh, producer that met me one day asked me if I was a singer or a DJ. Yeah, okay. Because it was like general vibes, he said it sounded more like a DJ name more than a singer's name. So okay. I'm there, Mr. Chan, let me just cut the general and cut it down to G, G. down to G vibes and that. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. so from that I've, I've, I hear that you moved from school and then you started singing on sound systems. So. Yeah, like um, the sound systems was, there was a whole lot of sounds in those days, so Remus was the second sound actually I sang on, I used to sing on a sound called Black Scorpion first okay. from Pepper. Yeah. And then um, went to a dance one night and Remus was there play and then got to meet them and became yeah. a member okay. of that sound. And then they were friends with the owners of Dread Diamonds. I met them as well and they was interested in having me singing on the sound too. So I ended up working between the two sounds okay. on um, I mean, a frequent basis and things like that. Yeah, yes. Because you know, choose to sing in, you just want to sing, you know. So. But it's just to you. Huh? It's just to you. <coughs> you said it's just. But that's a big thing to most people. Well, it was. Mm -hmm. In time, they like, as I said, if you. Well, our, our, we, when we were um, burning time, there's places to go. Yeah. Youth centres, and most of the youth centres, uh, one night of the week, or sometime would maybe have a sound system come in. Yeah. Maybe two. Yeah. You know, so. You, it was a natural thing to hear music yeah. and sounds were stringing up on the roads as well those, yeah. those times like maybe to test what they got they just put two bucks on the road and play for the day they never really used to get any botheration no one used to complain or yeah. 
Yeah. Anything too tough them time to, <laughs> to and if they did sometimes you turn it down, you just turn off whatever. Okay. You know? So was it while you was on these songs that you wrote your first songs? No, I used to brought my first songs in school. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we yeah. need to go back then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I started writing songs from um I suppose I started trying to write songs from about eleven. Wow. Maybe being young because from my singing I was always had uh, my creative mind yeah. and things. So even from school, I used to just write things, just write yeah. at first, just, you know, and thing that, have them in a book. Yeah, no, I mean, stories and things. I just used to write things. Yeah. And then later, uh, when it became a musical thing, I turned really the stories into songs. Okay. You know, because it was just things what I saw in life or what I thought about, I would just write about. Okay. And thing, you know, so. Wow. That's how the how the writing. When, came when was your out. first song produced? Produced? Um, well, not recorded, but the first from from a band's point of view, I suppose, I would have been about thirteen or so. Yeah. Um, the majors there when we started to write, um, got to the point. I think it took about two years to say the songs I was writing was of any any you know quality. Because kind of you write and you're growing, isn't it? So you're putting yeah. words like together, making things make sense, and then. So yeah, this you get to a point where you say, yeah, you know what, that's a good song. Yeah. yeah. And what was your first song? I can't remember. That, so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you've had lots and lots of hit songs since then. I've had a few tunes that done well over the time. Name us some been, of them. Um, started work with Jukes and Nice. I think one of the first was a collaboration with him, um, which was um, Human Nature. Then I did a track, Never Gonna Give Up Life. Um, did send her, uh, was it Spend of the Night, Persecution, mm. um, Jack and Make You Happy, Sound of the Trumpets, uh, yeah. quite a few different tracks there. Wow. So you said you told me, you said Jokes and Nice. Who else did you do collabor collaborations? Um, I've done collaborations with um, you know, Anthony B, Tipper Irie, Jamason, I know, um, mm. Chuckleberry, Wayne Lyrics. Wow. Yeah, I've a few, a few different people still. So what, what is your favourite song? I don't know. There's too much, too much. If a song has a different meaning, a different mode, a different time, I couldn't really say this one or that one. So none, none of, they all have meaning to you, but none yeah. more than the other? Yeah, well maybe some feel, you feel some more, but I couldn't really put my finger and say this one over all of them. You know? okay. How busy are you in terms of works? Our works could be works is moving still, you know. We've got the the studio running, yeah. um, putting reconstructing the website, getting music produced and everything. So really busy right now, you know, putting together a couple of albums yeah. and so forth. And, Performances. Yeah, yeah that and things. So, <laughs> it's, it's so where have you performed? I'll perform mainly through across most of Europe. Okay. Um, different places, different you know, from France, Italy, Germany, um, Poland, Sweden, Switzerland, so more as well, so, you know. <laughs> how, do you, how do you find the, the language barrier? Language, you find a lot of, most of the people, them, they, they know English across Europe. Yeah. I think the, the people that you're, you're moving amongst that come to, to, to put on, on the shows, there's always, um, we can always communicate. Yeah. That's all, you know, still so. Yeah, they know exactly what's going on as yeah. well. They don't, can't translate. No, some of them do, as I said, some of them is, they, sp they speak English, you know. A lot of Europe, as I said, Europe is more bilingual, I feel, say, than we are. They, they'll speak in two languages. Yeah. Where I'll, maybe here you find maybe less of us, maybe speak two or three, you know. How much of your time does music come on? Oh, I'll tell you, quite, quite a bit still. <laughs> quite a bit, quite a bit, you know. Live, sleep it. Yeah, well, you have to work, work in it to keep it, keep it going, you know. Yeah. Historically, who inspired you with your rigging career? Uh, my music career was, that was inspired to many different platforms, um, musically art. You know, I heard different sounds of music and voices. So from the sound, studio-wise, like Studio One, 
Treasure Isle, Channel One, you know, those areas. Um, singers wise, Dennis Brown, Mighty Diamonds, Abyssinians, many, many different singers, Jacob Miller, Hugh Mandel, you know, that thing. Because there's just different sounds and different things that some capture you, so yeah, you know, especially when you're learning your thing and you're still putting your thing to, to together, you hear something, you, yeah. you, hear, you know, something catches you. <laughs> to see if, if that can work within like what you're making as well. Yeah. yeah. So what about inspiration back at school? Our inspiration was just life. It was just life around us. If we see something happy, something sad, here's here's something good, here's something bad, you know? Yeah. What about teachers? Were there any teachers that helped you along your path? Yeah, there were some good teachers there. So the music teacher, um, she really opened the door for a lot of the youth them in the school to be able to, to, to have their own bands. She used to have us, um, the different bands within the school, mm. rehearsing on different nights and things, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And what about engineering? Yeah, well, it's true to, to, to even uh, still that I even got into the engineering car. She um, sent me to our youth club in the West End, mm. where I learned to wire up the mixing desk and PA and mixing live like bands okay. from like a young age and things so what was your young what age was that about 14 13 14 and that's that's built into you being what you are now yeah because i took it on board i never planned to say i was would have been an engineer or in the engineering field in uh in uh in i suppose in a more in, in as as much as i am yeah. you know i never visioned that when i was younger to say i'd be in the studio working yeah. more than being on the road, maybe singing and thing. But what else happened? That's yeah. just how things work out. You know? <laughs> so at school, that wasn't like a, a that was a specific type of subject you had to take to be able to become a good engineer, wasn't it? No, well, yeah. What it was, no, it was actually it wasn't within school. Okay. It was outside. Okay. You know, it was a youth centre up in the western, okay. and um. Because I said this, because in those times, all the youth centres and the schools, they were all linked. Yeah. So, there were facilities for all kinds of different things. Okay. You know what I mean? Creative arts from, from cover the whole thing. So, if you wanted to dance, there's places to go dance, anything. Yeah. So, she sent me to a youth, a youth centre what had live bands mm. um, playing there. Yeah. You know, and... Um, the, the, the engineer dish, as I said, showed me how to wire up mm. the desk and um, I used to be down there mixing the bands live, you know, and learning, learning it. Yeah, okay. Mm. Where do you think that the UK reggae scene sits globally? Mm. Well, it's, I mean, expanding <laughs> and, you know, getting into more and more places because the, the, the the world's open now to the internet, so... Do you think reggae here is the same as reggae in Jamaica? No, reggae, reggae is reggae, but places and places are going to um, instill different moods, yeah. emotions, so, and, and different vibes. Yeah. So, the two places would never exactly sound exactly the same, yeah. but they've both got their vibe off of it. They've got That's the it. same... Baseline of things that they're well, if they're doing reggae, it's reggae because it's it's a style, you know. It's within the genre. So if you're gonna be playing reggae music, yeah. then then it's 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 going to be reggae regardless of this of of it be from Jamaica or from here. Yeah. See? So it's just you get you're in different places, so you see things in a different different way. A different thing. They may be waking up to sunshine every day. Some people waking up here is cloudy. So yeah. <laughs> the different Moves. atmospheres yeah, as well, you yeah. know, create a different thing within yeah. the music. What do you think are the obstacles in the reggae, in re in the music industry? Music industry is always what the the the, the what the people they want to sell, isn't it? It's about the advertisers and them thing. Yeah. It's what they're selling, you know. If if you're if you're not what they're selling, then yeah. sometimes it can be a bit hard, you know. Way, yeah. Yeah. But they're they're specific with certain things. At a certain time, they're not always pushing a positive thing yeah. or certain vibes, or you know. Yeah. yeah. Mm.
Which contemporary artist UK based do you follow? Which, uh, which, which contem contemporary artist mm. British mm. Do, uh, do you think, do you rate? Well, there's a few different artists out there that's going on. Um, Russ, Russ Demo going on with a thing, his vibe is good. You see, um, Gappy Rats, Lazy in a Fire, Sparky Rugged, you know, Ch Chucky Bantan, you know. Quite a few artists out there, you know, Granty Asher, A Blaze of Fire, Donovan King, King J. Yeah. You know what I mean, only for man, only for man, A Blaze of Fire, obviously. Yeah. Mm. So, as a producer, what is your what is your your plans? What plans do you have for your producers? At the moment, we're just putting together a new website. So once that's there, we're going to be pushing out a lot more of the productions that's been sitting down, just creating, just adding more good music out for there for the world. You know? For the world. <laughs> and the name of the production is called New Phase Music. Yeah, that's it. New Phase Music, you know. So right. be able to How can they get in contact with New Phase Music? New Phase Music will be operating on the website um, www.newphasemusic.com. Uh, will be accessible on Facebook, Instagram, all the media bases. You know, okay. what's that? That's it. If you was, if there was a, a youngster that was interested in to be, in becoming, say, you've got so many genres. Let's say <laughs> a producer. Uh -huh. What 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 guidelines would you give them? Yeah, if you want to be into a producer to have a good creative mind, you know, and like, um, also have, have a plan and a focus to how to set the team, yeah. you know what I mean, together and just, uh, you know, just, just do your research to know how things work because everything is open to us now, you know what I mean, yeah. accessible, so anything you want to do, you can do the research on it and know how to do it right, you know what I mean, yeah. and that's it, just go to the places where you need to go. Yeah. And say it right, you know. Why should a global reggae family support and listen to G Vibes? Ah, see, because we're gonna give them some good music, you know, some quality vibes, everything, some good vibration to hold, a meditation, or maybe open your mind and your eyes to certain things, and just full joy life, you know, come with a positive, you know, vibration, adding, adding to the universe, you know, everything blessed, the levels, you know. Tell us about your most popular songs. Uh, some of the most popular songs. Um, well, this is one at the moment. Um, Little Green Apples. Um, that's, that's been doing very well. Been had a lot of airplay, done a video for it. So it's moving well. Which is your personal favourite? Uh, I haven't really got a favourite. So <laughs> everything's a different, every tune's a different tune. You know what I mean? And some of them just pose a vibe with on that day. They, they were made for a purpose, you know, yeah. so, like, yeah, everything's good. You're busy introducing UK artists to the scene. How busy are you promoting reggae music and artists? At the moment, as I said, we're constructing a new website. So once that's all in place, we'll be able to start pumping and promoting everything worldwide on a yeah, continual basis. What other of the obstacles reggae promoters currently face? Uh, just really getting venues, um, so it's the reggae promoters face. Sorry, reggae artists. Oh, reggae artists? Yeah. Reggae artists, we just, um, just getting problems with face. We just, the sales part of the music has kind of changed. A lot of people's not buying music, they're getting them from free Stream. streams and certain things. Some of the streaming now has been, um, monitored where pay is coming off of them okay. but there's certain places where um a lot of people are just downloading music without paying for it yeah to buy it it's a lot cheaper than the days of vinyl yeah so you know That's true. much cheaper you know? how much of your time does music command um music commands a good amount of time you know still a lot but for, for like any business if you're gonna make it work, you have to you have to put in the time. Yeah. Historically, who inspired you to write reggae music, and who were your peers at the time? Just the sound of reggae music itself. When I heard it, 
It just um, I went to Jamaica as a youth when I was um, about eight. Yeah. And that's when I really, really heard reggae music from us there for a few weeks and everything and like the whole sound, the, you know, the energy. Yeah, but that was it. I was hooked. I think the energy there is completely different to the energy here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Explain to the Gogol family why music is important to you. Uh, music's important to me because uh, it's just something that I've, it's always been a part of me. Mm. You know, it's something where I've been able to to put across um, opinions and messages mm. to people where sometimes people don't want to listen to certain things but when they hear it in a musical form, yeah. you know, I think so. Yeah, well, music's important part, part of life. It makes people, people happy, you know, and make people come together. Yeah. Are you religious and do you believe in the Most High? I'm not religious, but yeah, I believe in the Most High. And does it influence your work? I suppose so, because everything what you um, hold hold dear to you mm. um, influences your decisions throughout, throughout life. You know? yeah. so. Where do you think the, the UK reggae scene sits? Oh, it sits up there amongst, amongst it. Um, I mean everything else. So the 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 the, the access to the world now is just there. It's open, you know. The internet is there. Everything just goes. You know what I mean? Everywhere. So you're not limited to just where you are. Yeah. You got the whole the whole world yeah. open to yourself. Which contemporary artist, UK based, do you follow? Uh, a few artists I know well still that um. I listen to but even going back to to your previous question, the 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 world's always been open to it. So even before the internet, the artists from the UK was going to Japan, going to South America, America and different Asia and different parts of the world. You know, it's always been so from here. So it's it's not something new. Our platform has always been open. It's on not that, been used. on that level, no, no, it's being used because the artists are there. They're mm. doing it. There's artists I can name which are out there and doing this, okay. and going to those places. Okay. So, you know, they was doing, they was going then, and they're going now. Yeah. So the platforms are there. Yeah. Tell us about your your roots production. Our uh, roots productions, ah, yeah, they have. This is one of them. Um, one of the most popular ones. Uh, persecution. This was um, a tune that was put together by me and released on the Riverbank label. Okay. And, uh, and um, yeah, the, the sound systems took to it. Yeah. And thing, uh, it done, it done, it done a, a good amount of work. Out there, so, you know. <laughs> what other labels have you worked on? I've worked on Stingray, worked with Pekins, I uh, work with Solar Dub, yeah. work with um, Roots High Tech. Yes. And a couple of us as well. Okay. What makes your production stand out from the, the current music? Well, each individual has their, their 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 sound and their vibe, you know. So it's about it's about the sound. So the sound I'm gonna bring forward to you. Yeah. People who who check for that sound and that vibe. Yeah. You know? Which artist complements your production? Mm. Artists. Yeah, a few. <laughs> it's just vibes, you know what? Many this that's that one theory, there's quite a few different artists I can work with because I don't just do one thing. I do roots, I do rubber dub, I do lovers, you know, can do dance or vibes. So there's a vibe and a style across the board okay. of you know, of artists I can like work with within the productions. What I mean, artists do you work with? Over at the moment I've worked with Vivian Jones, Chucky Banton, Caroline Thompson, uh, work some work to be doing with Peter Spence. Mm -hmm. So you know I mean Sparky Rugged. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. Yeah, so um, a few others as well I've worked with. I've worked with Tip Irie, Michael Rose. Yeah. Um, we've got productions with like Frankie Paul and Gregory Isaacs, Sugar Miner from, you know, yeah. as well. So yeah, quite a few. Jamason, <laughs> um, Anthony B. Yeah, but, you know, 
Yeah, I'm sure there's loads more in there that if you yeah, 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 had time they would come up to you. More. I mean, weird lyrics and bridges. <laughs> Pinchers. See? All these as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's a few, it's a few. It's a few else. Yeah. Yeah. Lewis Simmons, Tadanta, you know, can't live out the man there. What about Vibes Cartel? Vibes Cartel? Vibes Cartel, I haven't worked with him personally, but yeah, it was, he was amongst the come to you in the early, early days. You know, um, God damn time when the studio was busy, he is, he is still. A lot of artists is from Jamaica, from England, who used to pass it on a daily basis, you know, yeah. just all the vibe and do certain work that was going on, so it was fairly busy them time. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much for There's a place you can be, the fire red will set you free, so free. You can reach there if you try Don't stop searching to find the most high Fire red, stay tuned, stay locked to the time See you, more like, bless it up G vibes today Yeah, I got judge them through them cause they vision. Yeah, I got bond them with the 